Sorry I've been away. I've had a toothache. This is suggested by Royal Trash, who just started a Twitch account, so please follow him as well. Uh, on his Twitch, I have no idea what this is about. Something about Lord Miles and Kabul, Afghanistan. All I can say is, at the beginning of the video, fuck the Taliban. But, let's check it out. So people were shooting in the air, babies were screaming, um, women were running around, you know, in burkas. Um, Everyone's fighting, there's like things on fire. It's basically anarchy, right? Um, so it's pretty based. Miles Le Visconte Routledge is a 21 year old British man that at time of recording is currently stuck in Kabul. Kabul, the capital of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. <laughs> the capital of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. <laughs> Ah, we'll go through the entire timeline up to now, and thankfully you won't have to hear me butcher any more French, because Miles would be referred to by his honourable title that he earned through less than honourable means, Lord Miles. The timeline begins as far back as the 5th of May, when he first announced on his Facebook that he'd be travelling to Afghanistan. This makes later events even more incredulous as he timed his arrival almost perfectly for the collapse of the Afghan security forces. Fast forward to 2.01pm on Friday the 13th in August. Afghanistan looked like this and Miles looked like this. <laughs> <laughs> on the 14th, Afghanistan now looked like this. He posted two further threads at 6.51am on the Sunday the 15th, and then later on at 3.31pm the same day. On that day, Afghanistan looked like this, and the most cursed Wikipedia page I've ever seen was created. Is this what history feels like? It was now Monday, and Miles created a new thread at 8.47am. Afghanistan still looks like this, but now Kabul's airport also looks like this. Things were not looking great for our man Miles. All the while he was posting to his Facebook page and tried to livestream to it, then switched to Twitch to stream there, which went on for significantly longer. Most of these posts have been deleted by him now though, people mostly think in realization that he was handing out a little bit too much information, especially since One Piece just straight up tells us the compound he's in. But we'll get to that later. The 4chan threads opened with a banger when he revealed his genius plan. If he was kidnapped by the Taliban, he was legally considered a lord, so he would hope to be ransomed. He explained in the livestream that he'd bought one of those joke deeds that classes you as a lord, then got dressed in a suit and went to his bank to ask them to change his title on his card. This worked apparently, and he's enjoyed the benefits ever since. So whenever I call up American Express, they go, Oh, hi, Mr. Oh. Lord Routledge, they just like give you special treatment, so it always helps. Like, for example, with the flight over, they saw I was a lord when I purchased like additional food, and they didn't charge me for it. They said, No, no, lord, it's it's free on the house. If I go to a hotel, they give me the best rooms, like they say, You know, um, we give you this for you because you're a lord. I'm like, No one knows any better, and it's not illegal, it's it's just people don't people are ignorant. So, yeah, if you can become a lord or lady. As for why he chose Afghanistan, he said he googled the top 10 most dangerous countries in the world and used it like a shopping list. He claims to have gone to Chernobyl and bribed a guard to let him take home a gas mask that he later sold for more than the cost of the trip. The images on his Facebook at least corroborate the fact that he had been to Chernobyl itself. Why did he still choose to go to Afghanistan though? Well, he said the tickets were non-refundable, so he decided to go anyway, since his original plan would have him leave on a plane back home on the 19th. To be entirely fair to the guy, he may be an idiot, but so is every single intelligence agency, military advisor, and journalist that said Afghanistan would hold for months. <laughs> He then got banned for doxing himself and came back with the photo. The first thread was mostly law building for Miles, like that he's a devout Catholic and that he clogged his hotel's toilet. Remember this, it's important later. The second thread started out much the same, a cheery tone, clogging the toilet for a second time, and laid out his plans for the day. <laughs> Get some money, feed refugees and the starving dogs, and become Britain's leading Afghan rug importer. His plans were dashed by a run in the banks by the Afghans, leaving the ATMs empty and miles without his rugs. Rugs. The rugs I wanted. We at least got a little look at his first hotel that he referred to as his safe house. Then he went to the top of a hill and- Oh. Oh no. I know the world is scary right now, but... It's gonna get way worse. Miles began his escape attempts, covering himself in a burqa until he switched to a headscarf. He found another British national and arrived at the airport only to find there were no flights, leading to a line that had been quoted in nearly every article about the man. Miles says he saw the Taliban enter the airport and he left, headed back to the safe house. This was his last message in the second thread and was posted at 3.04pm on the Sunday. Miles returned just half an hour later with the third thread, stating that he had found the hidden international resistance place 
this turned out to apparently just mean a UN safe house, but more on that later. Our man Miles says he met Turks and Brits in the safe house, and that he's been put into a room while the situation was sorted out. This was the only time he posted in this thread, because the safe house had made the critical mistake of giving him a Wi-Fi password, so the live streams began. Oh god, fuck! The fourth thread due to it lacking much detail. The fourth thread was started at 8.47am on the Monday, showing us that the Lord had survived the night, but revealing nothing else worthy of note, save for the identity of the leader of the Taliban. On to the live streams. The first was attempted on his Facebook and was deleted quickly. He stated in the Twitch live stream this was due to most of the people in the 4chan thread not actually having Facebook accounts to watch the stream. The Twitch live stream then went live, with upwards of 3,000 people at its peak watching a British man shitpost live from a city in the midst of a Taliban takeover. Unfortunately, I can't show you the chat, as in true internet fashion, it was mostly filled with big black dicks. Highlight the following. <laughs> I, I tried to message um, the Syrian embassy, and I called them a few times asking if I could meet Assad. But he basically said no. And I was like, okay, I'll go Afghanistan then. Do you remember me saying on the thread that I clogged the toilet? I never got to unclog it. <laughs> so, there's a massive shit left somewhere of the Taliban to go and uncover. You're the massive shit! Oh, it's better. Oh, you even get out. We're not too sure yet. <laughs> um, basically, there's Americans, there's, uh, there's Russians, there's, there's basically... Five minutes and I'm already fucking pissed off. What the fuck is wrong with these people? What? Fuck's sake. Everyone here. So I'm a physics student. I love the university. Best uni out there. Excellent yeah. people. I'll show you my visa. How about that? Yeah? You guys want to see my visa? Here you guys go. Here you go. Delete that browser history. Yeah, I actually did before going. Here, yeah, so my tour guide. This is a big issue. So my tour guide, basically. He's help. He's translated for the Afghani people and the government. So he's basically aided the government before. So the Taliban want to kill him. And he's the loveliest person ever. I can't say anything about him because you know, I guarantee the Taliban is watching. They're not on TikTok for Christ's sake. Um, but he's an amazing person. He got me here. He got me everywhere. He got me out of trouble. You know, he's he's sound, and he's trying to apply apply for asylum. So if anyone knows anyone inside the asylum system within America or Canada or something. This is the one guy that deserves to actually get out of the country and get asylum. He speaks really good English, he's very pleasant, but he could abandon me. He has a family, um, you know, his parents or something like that. He could have just went all bright thing. I've got your money now, but he didn't. And I still haven't paid him everything yet because the ATMs were down. Is your girlfriend red pilled? She's Catholic. Uh, please film power socket. Let me just go and ride the camera. I'm going to transport you guys around. Uh, that's that's the power socket. I have to have a military evac. So, like, there's loads of helicopters overhead. Oh! I just heard a whirring noise, like a firework, or it might be a missile. How are the locals treating you? Very good, actually. I've had like handshakes. I've, I've shaken the hands of the Taliban. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, airport, yeah, I've got the airport here. And then the Taliban were rolling in. So I was leaving depressed. I'm thinking, oh, no flights. And then because there was three convoys with like, you know, machine guns, the Taliban were there. Okay, um. If there was ever an example of why ISIS hits the West, the first eight minutes of this video and this douchebag is the reason why. My God, he's a douchebag. Kind of want to slap him in the face. Ah! And I just walk in between them, on between their, you know, their um, cars with a cross on. We make eye contact. I kind of just nod at them. And then because they're driving towards me, I just put my hand out on their car and just stop them. And then they stop for me and let me pass. Change your category on Twitch, just chatting. You get more views, really? Now we turn to look at Facebook. Surprisingly, the best source of information throughout this entire event. Unfortunately, these screenshots are all we have left, as these posts were later wiped. Things start normal, some celebration for his viral posts, some darker posts as things turn bad, mirroring the 4chan threads. However, it seems the fear of death had finally caught up to our intrepid British explorer and hit him hard. 
These posts were later removed, but show Miles suffering through a mental break during his time at the safe house. He later went on to say in the fourth 4chan thread that this was a temporary mental break, and he felt better afterwards. Then someone handed the man who just had a mental break a gun. He apologized for being too based, 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 based. I'm too based for my own good. On his stream before all of his. Okay, um, change the subject for just a second. What is base? Can somebody explain in the comments? Like literally, what is base? Like I'm not even joking. I don't understand. I don't understand slang these days, even though I am on Twitch. I don't understand Pog. I don't understand all these kind of things. So I only learned what Yeet was like maybe three months ago. So what is based? Can somebody explain it to me? Facebook messages and most of his Twitch stream was deleted. The only ones left were his three most recent <laughs> posts, thanking people for their help and also mentioning that while he was safe, his tour guide was fearing for his family requesting that people donate to the charities in the area. There is one final post, but we'll save that for the ending. Let's turn our attention to the private messages, the safe house, and other information I've received. Thank you to Dirk and CM, among other anonymous sources, for providing information to help with this video. It is significantly harder to provide a timeline for this information, but any information I share in this video I've done my best to verify as legitimate. As always, if I am correct and proven wrong, or new information comes to light, I'll include it in a pinned comment. To start with, his Hidden International Resistance Place. Originally, one of my friends attempted to map out his location using the live stream's audio and the flight radar, and we thought we had things pretty narrowed down. Turns out we didn't need to bother, as Dirk posted the badge that Miles had attempted to keep hidden on his stream to Facebook. I later contacted Dirk and managed to confirm that he had been in contact with Miles, bringing some legitimacy to the information. Lord Miles was caught at Zohak Village, a compound apparently being utilized by international forces in the area. I've got this pass here, I'll show you it. Give away where I am. I was told it was a known UN safe house. Known to who, though, I do not know. I tried Googling UN safe houses in Afghanistan, <laughs> but that just led to ASIO knocking on my door. And thankfully, they can't come in due to the Melbourne lockdown. Journalists reported it as being a UN safe house, and we know they've never been wrong before, so we'll stick with that. By the recording of this video, according to Miles' latest post, the compound will have been abandoned. Another DM confirmed Miles as the creator of the fourth thread, and that he was still alive and well at the time, though wondering if the UK government might throw him in the slammer when he gets home. He also confirmed that he was with the British Armed Forces at the time. At this point, the airport in Kabul is looking like a scene out of any cheap zombie movie, with US forces strap using a fucking Apache to clear the runway at one point. Genuinely, holy shit, I've watched a lot of combat footage and this is the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. I obviously cannot show you, but there's even footage of Afghans clinging to the aircraft as they take off. Clinging to the outside, that is. Oh, yeah. You can guess how the footage ends. Oh. This explains why, despite being with international forces, he wasn't already on a plane and home free. But his final Facebook post brings some hope. It states that he'll be given body armor and an emergency evacuation to a better place, as most compounds are to be abandoned. He stated that he was with the best of the best, and that this may be the moment, lads. Pray. So that's the last of the information we have directly from Miles, though recently he deleted that last post. But the story doesn't stop there, in fact it gets crazy. So crazy that I cannot show you the article I'm referencing. Sorry, but for once in this video I'm going to have to ask you to trust me. Because we've just spent the last six hours or so desperately attempting to remove the information from the internet. I never thought I'd leverage the friends I play armor with as an info security operation, but credit to each and every one of them, I wouldn't have managed this without them. You get me now. Tired, wired on caffeine, and with a pounding headache. I was gonna wear the Ushanka, but uh, you may understand in a moment I uh, need to be a little bit more serious here. I've done my best to interweave the seriousness of this situation with the inherent humor, that's why I started this whole video in the first place, but the last of the information isn't humorous, it's genuinely dangerous. I will not mention this website that the information was posted on, nor the writer of it. I will say the writer was the last person in contact with Miles to my knowledge, as of 2pm Afghanistan time. This is on the Monday. During this time, the writer conducted an interview, and Miles provided excessive information to him, down to the number of soldiers in what I believe to be a new compound other than Zohak Village, but this cannot be confirmed. Incredibly, and I asked the writer if Miles was sure, and the writer confirmed, that when the plane that Miles is intended to leave on arrives, he will put on a bulletproof vest and travel to the airport with a Taliban escort. The estimated departure of the flight is anywhere from the next two days to the next two weeks. So it seems that Miles is safe, even with the Taliban being aware of his location. What was horrifying, though, was the other information revealed in the article. 
For those of you who don't know, an interpreter or terp is a native citizen who worked with the international forces as a translator and guide. In this case, Afghans working with ISAF forces. Their identities are kept strictly secret and their faces obscured in photographs, as insurgent groups, in this case the Taliban, almost always mark them for death. And if they cannot get the interpreters themselves, the interpreter's family. Remember what Miles said during the live stream. I explain all of this because the article named the tour guide who was with Miles, providing his real name and the information that he worked with the Afghan government in exactly that role. This is about as literal as you can get to painting a target on someone's back. When we found this information, we immediately contacted the writer and a little while later got the name removed. However, at this point, the page had been archived, which led us to contacting the people behind the Wayback Machine and getting the archive scrubbed as well. As of this recording, it seems that we were successful and the information is gone from the internet. It does not matter what your thoughts on Miles are, and believe me, mine are in the absolute fucking gutter. As the writer informed me that Miles had told them he'd received permission to use the guide's name. The writer should have known better before reporting on the situation, but Miles' short-sightedness now puts others in actual danger. And for that, he is deserving of ire. The guide has, by all accounts, been nothing but a hero and deserves none of the danger he has been put in. For now, that is the story, and I leave you with the epilogue. I doubt we'll hear any more from Miles for quite some time. God damn it, I was just about to render this. Well, we have new word from Miles at 2 a.m. Afghanistan time on the Tuesday. He says he's been evacuated with about 100 or so other civilians. It's not clear whether he means evacuated outside of Afghanistan or to a different safe house in Afghanistan inside of the airport. We believe it is most likely to the airport, and then from there he'll be moving on outside. Once we know, I will answer that in the pinned comment, whether he's actually in or out of Afghanistan, when he's got his flight, so on and so forth. But for now, the video actually needs to start rendering and he doesn't seem to be answering any questions on his Facebook page. Regardless, the guy seems safe. He's with civilians, he's with the military, he'll be fine. I can only hope that his tour guide is just as safe. If we do, it'll be in the pinned comment, or... God forbid he actually gives me enough to do a second video on, I just want to sleep. Let's wrap this up. Do I think it's real? Absolutely. Beyond the simple stuff like 4chan getting him to perform for them, or writing his name on paper, the level of planning that would go into faking something like this is beyond reason. He has shown his hotel badge, his visa, his flight documents, his boarding pass, a Kabul license plate, various photos of himself in easily identifiable locations in Afghanistan. Other students of his university have identified him, most of them hating his guts, mm -hmm. and I've even spoken with others that know him. Above all else, the thing that makes me believe this the most is that the media and the embassy and government officials in charge of making sure he gets out of the country and not onto, you know, whatever's going to replace LiveLeak have had plenty of time to look into this by now. If Miles didn't actually exist in Kabul, the embassy that is getting flooded with calls from people telling them to help him would have put out a statement saying that he's lying, especially since he's apparently alongside British soldiers right now. That sort of thing is rather easy to confirm or deny. But all the same, this is a rapidly developing story and I may be wrong. If I am, then I must say it's the most elaborate and impressive prank I've seen in my life, but I doubt it. For now, all we can hope is that the plane our lord has boarded will get home safe and sound. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. Now people may wonder what I think, you shouldn't. This video is just meant to summarize the crazy events of the last few days. But because I know idiots on the internet will assume I think one way or the other, I will say it. I don't sympathize with Miles for traveling to a war zone and getting himself in trouble. I don't hate him for it either. If a man wants to travel to a war zone and get himself killed, well, that's no one's problem but his own. However, if it turns out that a soldier gets hurt or money is wasted saving him, then absolutely lambast the guy for his stupid choice. Personally, I think the guy acts like an edgy teenager and I find it hard to believe he's the same age as me, but I don't really care about his politics, nor his faith, nor even his edginess. I care about the story of one man stuck in Kabul, a piece of history. It's human nature to look for a focal character in any great event. There's many more fascinating, terrifying, and insane things happening in Kabul right now, but people get invested in a story. Whew, well, I still have Kark and another video to work on, but hey, I guess I missed the whole investigative journalism thing. Only now, instead of horny mod devs, it's an idiot abroad. Godspeed, Lord Miles, and good night. Okay, do not insult an idiot abroad. The thing is, Carl Pilkington would never do something like that. I need to research this. Alright, I just googled it, and I only saw half of the first page because I'm not going to spend more of my life looking at Lord Miles. But 
apparently he's safe. This video was released on the 17th of August and on the 18th to the 21st there were articles saying that he's safe. So don't get me wrong, I'm glad he's not dead. But what Rime says, the creator, is correct. If somebody died because of this dickwad, I would be pissed off. If the interpreter died because of this dickwad, I would be pissed off. I mean, like seriously, go on holiday. I mean, things are opening up. Covid's kind of ending, not yet, but kind of ending. Go on holiday at places that won't get other people killed. Who gives a fuck about you? Other people, people with families, people who won't spend time putting lot on their credit cards. Good God. Who have pissed off? You have been bad man blessed.